do this without show notes today. And welcome to the Once Upon a Corgi podcast. This is a crafty puppy podcast coming to you from Southern Connecticut. I'm your host, Gabby, and you can find me everywhere online as Gabby Gales and all my hand dyed yarn at Once Upon a Corgi. And we have our two corgis pitter pattering around today Audrey, who is the OG corgi, and Iron, who is one of her sons. She had a litter of puppies for all new viewers. And thank you so much for joining us today to talk a little bit about what we have been crafting. Hello to all new viewers. Thank you so much for checking us out and welcome all returning viewers. Thank you so much for coming back. We're going to fix the blinds because we're getting super blown out now. And if you can't tell, my bangs are getting quite long, so they are going to be poking me in the eye the whole episode. Welcome! It is Thursday, July 5th, so this is coming out a little bit later than usual because it was the holiday Wednesday. I don't know what you call it. So it is Thursday morning. We have our coffee in our bun mug. See, it's a bun. I thank you for that, Audrey. Administrative stuff. We have an event coming up. We actually have two events coming up. We are going to be vending at the Super Summer Knit Together hosted by the Knit Girls in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, the retreat is July 18th through 22nd, I believe, and the marketplace will be the Saturday, which is the 21st, and it is open to the public. So I will put a link to their website if you are in that area and want to check it out. We will also be hosting a surprise pop-up at the Cottage Yarns shop in Mint Hill, North Carolina. We did a trunk show with them earlier this year, and we decided since we have to drive up the East Coast, we might as well bra straps. Since we have to drive up the East Coast, we might as well make it a little bit of a road trip and take a pit stop and say hello. So we will be there Tuesday, July 24th, I believe starting at about 4 or 5 p.m. until they close. And I will put a link to their website as well. So if you're not in Tennessee, but you're in the North Carolina area, it's uh, right outside Charlottesville, I believe, then you can come and say hello. I think the only other stops we are making on that trip is Baltimore to stop and see uh, one of Jake's friends from work. If we make any other stops, I will let you know. Our other administrative stuff is the Rules Sock Cal that has ended June 30th and I remembered to lock the thread. So I will be posting the winner right here. Uh, I am going to pull it in edits. So they will be winning a sock. Here it is. The sock skein from the After the Rain sock kits, it's just the yarn, so you get one skein of uh, fiddleheads and one mini of puppy paws. So congratulations to the winner. Please get in touch with me on Ravelry and just let me know your address and I will get this shipped off to you. I think that's it for podcast administrative stuff. The last administrative stuff is shop related, but you are here. So I just want to say a gigundo thank you to everybody who came and supported the Tits Out Collective colorway. I totally dropped the ball on advertising it beforehand and getting everything ready before the weekend that it went up, but that, that was my bad. We did participate and we had the colorway. If I want exposure, I'll get my tits out tell me to smile one more time. And that was only on the penny base. And we sold, I wanna say 32 skeins for a pre-show thing it was amazing. And we have now uh, 106 or $160 will be donated to Planned Parenthood. So after SSK, I will be sending that out. And I just wanna say thank you so much to everybody who supported it, who liked it, who, 
just everything. Uh, we will be bringing some to SSK, so if you did not get a skein in the pre-order rounds, um, whatever comes back will go up in the shop and it will be the same thing if you buy it at either Trunk Show or Marketplace. Uh, $5 from each skein will go to Planned Parenthood. It was just an amazing collective to be a part of and I love seeing everybody's colorways. So again, thank you so much for showing all the support to everybody, designers, dyers, progress keeper makers, I don't, know, I don't know what to call them, mother makers, just supporting all the makers in this whole thing. So thank you so much. And I will put a link to the Countess of Blaze website and her original blog post if you are still a little bit confused about what was going on. <laughs> Go inside, bang, what's happening. Uh, I think that's it for administrative stuff. We did events, we did the knit along, we did exposure. Oh, we have new pattern giveaways. So I will be posting those here because I have no show notes and I'm terrible at this. Okay, where were we? All right, let us get into the crafting. We can start off with what am I wearing? I am wearing two finished objects today. I just ran head first into the light. I am wearing the um, Peter Pan collar blouse by Gertie from Gertie's Better Book for Gertie's Book for Better Sewing. Ta -da! It is out of a white knit fabric with these beautifully viney leaves. And I just did snaps. The closure is in the back. Da, da, da. It is machine sewed and then I did hand stitching for um, the finishing edges because I felt like it. And the second finished object, oh I'll put a picture up here. I finished a pencil skirt! Ta-da! So this pattern, so it is a pattern from Patterns for Pirates. It is a super simple three-piece knit fabric pencil skirt. Uh, I whipped this up yesterday in a couple hours just because I was cutting out a bunch of stuff and I really like the way it fits. Um, there's a little bit of bulk because I haven't trimmed down any of the seams down here, but it's easy to whip up. It's super comfy and I love it. So those are my two, two of my finished objects and what I am wearing and I love it. And you can never have too much floral on black fabric. Our only other finished object is our design shawl. I posted sneak peeks of this on Instagram. I just put out a call for test knitters. So uh, I will check my email when I'm done recording this to see if I have enough. And that is, I'm tentatively calling this my mischief manded shawl. And it is out of my hand dyed yarn in the colorway field mice and flower crowns. And here it is. It's a half circle construction with an applied border, eyelets and lace. And I'm so happy with it. I love it so much. I'm so proud of it. You can't see it if I hold it down there. And I just really love the way it turned out. It is going to be a gift for my friend who is getting married in November. I asked her if she were to have a shawl for her wedding, what colors it would be. And so she was like, oh my God, I'm looking for one. So I decided to design her one. So there we go. It, I think it's going to be perfect for a November wedding and to go with her dress. So I'm very pleased with it. So yes, I am looking for test knitters for this. Uh, again, I already put the call out on Instagram. So fingers crossed the spots have been filled, but if not, I will, what is my hair doing? Nice for five seconds and then it's ruined. Uh, I don't know what else to tell you about it. It's two skeins of fingering weight yarn. Uh, I did it on my penny base, which is my 801010 Superwash Merino cashmere and nylon and I think I'm going to have one of the testers hold mohair with it just to see how it looks because I am very curious and I think it would be beautiful. I do plan on knitting another one of these. Uh, I want to knit one in a darker color and try and add some beads to it. I just felt like halfway through the applied border I was like ooh, I should have put beads in this so we, we will try that on the next one. Yeah, I'm super proud of this. I'm gonna reblock it just because I didn't have enough blocking mats to really get the shape going. And I borrowed some from my friend. We can redo that. And here is the colorway up close. And I will be releasing the colorway at SSK. 
um, and the pattern I'm aiming for in August release date. So that is my other finished object. Which leads us into whips, and I have a ton because I had a sewing day yesterday. So we'll start with sewing whips. There's gonna be so many links in these show notes. I made two pairs of the Hatchling Baby Leggings by Made With Ray. I have made a pair out of double gauze. Look at how small these are. I hope these fit. I don't know how small baby legs actually are. So I don't know that size. Uh, I don't know how small babies are. Um, I just have to get elastic for these guys and they are all set. And my plan is to just make a bunch of quick baby sews and have gifts ready for everybody who is having the children's soon. Most of these are probably gonna go to um, the lady in my knit group for her daughter. Uh, and I also made one out of the black floral and black fabric because you can't start them too young. So there we are. And these ones also need to, um, I just had to fold them over and get elastic for them. But my machine was getting a little snippy with me yesterday. So uh, yeah, I definitely have not a lot of this fabric left, but enough to make a couple more pairs. So I might just whip up a couple more pairs because these are just the cutest things I've ever seen. And I also made tentatively a bunch of, um, they're called burpee bibs and they're by Patterns for Pirates. But I think I need to do a different backing because this one isn't as absorbent as I thought it was gonna be. I ran a couple tests, much to Jake's confusion by just like throwing random cups of water on these things. Uh, I'm gonna bring them to my friend who has children and see what she says. So we have a glow-in-the-dark Star Wars one. We have, oops, a green castle one. These ones aren't flipped because I realize I have to redo them, but the pattern just says, I like you. There's two of those. And two fat little Audrey fabrics. How cute. So, um, the pattern said the cotton's not good because it's not absorbent. And I was hoping this would be, and it's just like this soft flannel, but I think it's too soft. So I might just find some like old um, bath cloths or something and use that or see what Johan, Johan, see what Joann's has on sale. So I made, I think six of those. Da -da -da. And I probably have to redo all of them, but we will see. Uh, yeah, so we just did a bunch of quick baby knits, knit, not knits, baby sews yesterday, but that's not all. I also cut out pattern pieces for the bateen dress by Tilly and the Buttons, and I am doing uh, it out of a knit fabric. She did a blog post about doing it in like jersey knits, so we're gonna do it in a knit. And this is, um, oh, I forgot who makes this fabric but I got it on fabric.com and I have, uh, it's the same company that did my uh, Anna dress in the double gauze, but this is just the knit version of that fabric. And it's just this beautiful, super neutral medium gray with birds on it. And this time I made sure all the birds are right side up. Now that I'm looking at it, I think all the birds are upside down. Did I cut this out upside down? <laughs> Does this look better? Oh my god, they're all upside down. No, whatever. Ugh. You know what? It's fine. They're just birds. I can't believe I did. Ugh. I laid all the pattern pieces out upside down and then I flipped everything over so they'd be right side up and now it's... No, I can't have nice things. So yes, I cut that out and uh, I just have to put that together and I'm hoping to put that together before we leave for Tennessee because I think that will be a very nice uh, hot weather-ish summer dress. It'll be easy to move in. I am hoping to get a couple other dresses done, but no promises. We have two weeks left and I'm still waiting for my shipment of yarn to come in because I ordered everything over a holiday weekend and therefore everything has backed up. I believe I just did that. I can't believe I just realized I did that. <sighs> it's fine. It's abstract enough. I don't think anyone's gonna notice. Maybe I'll cut it out so you guys can't even tell I did that. Speaking of birds, I have put a little bit of work into my Birds of a Feather Shawl by Andrea Mowry, and I'm knitting this out of my hand-dyed yarn, Once Upon a Corgi, on my Marie Cutie base and Fig lace base. And here we are. We got through one section of the lace and we have just finished the next mohair section, I believe. I think so. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, so we have just finished another mohair section. So we have another garter section and we are just chugging along. It's not going as fast as I thought it would, but I also haven't really been knitting on it that much. So, and this is on my Lady of Shalott colorway on both bases and I love it so much. This last round has turned out much more mm, like this reddish color than this batch, but I still really love it. Uh, not much to say about it, still working on it. Uh, I'm using US 5s, nope, just kidding, US 6s, 4.0 millimeter Knitter's Pride Novas, um, and just chugging along on it. It's probably gonna be a big car knit because it's got enough that I have to pay attention that it'll help me stay awake. Our next two uh, works in progress are new cast-ons. Uh, last week I was working on the Michelada top and I ran into another snafu. So I took both front and back and ripped them out and cast on the Mount Pleasant top by Pip and Pin, Pin and Pip, one of those two. Instead, it's been much easier, it's been nicer to me to do, and I just don't know what my brain, or what, if it was like, I'm gonna research in on Ravelry to see if there was like an error in the pattern or something, but it wasn't lighting up, and I had the correct amount of stitches, and I just couldn't figure it out, so I ripped it out, cast on a new project. So this is the Mount Pleasant Top, and it is still at a Leading Man Fiber Arts out of their showstopper base in the Gothic Queen colorway, which is this beautiful, super dark, uh, semi-solid mauve. And we did the lace, which was super easy to memorize and fly through. And we are now in the waist shaping bit. And I think we have about seven more rows last, one more increase, and then we are just knitting until it's at the desired length. So there we are. I am knitting the medium. Um, the One of the models in the pattern was wearing it with eight inches positive ease. So I decided I wanted her style for it, but I did go down a needle size just because the yarn is a little bit thinner. So I did the lace on a size three and uh, I'm knitting the body on a size four while the pattern calls for a size four for the lace and a size five for the body. So I'm hoping it's going to be about seven, six to seven inches positive ease. I'm probably not gonna super block it. I'll just like steam block it so it doesn't grow down or out too much because I do want some positive ease. But I don't want it to be like falling off positive ease and I also don't want it to be too long. Um, they didn't say how tall the model was but I'm guessing she's about my height because I do want this to be a little bit cropped so I can wear it with pencil skirts and high waist jeans and that sort of thing. So there we go, we are chugging along. I had a dream of finishing it for SSK. My dream is now to finish it for the Bachelorette weekend, the weekend after SSK, because I feel like this would be super cute, maybe to wear to the wedding shower that weekend because it's her Bachelorette slash wedding shower. So all of us out of staters can go to both. And that's mostly what I've been working on to try and make up for all the lost time I spent trying to figure out the Michelada top. I will one day go back and do it. I just can't right now. And it's still in my Horcrux Hogwarts bag, which is 87% dog hair right now. Our next new cast on is living in our pin bag. Look at them all. Oh, you're so, you're pretty good. And that is the Winter Rose Socks by Curious Handmade. It is part of her sock society, which I joined and proceeded to forget I joined and then discovered them when she did an update uh, this month or last month. And I am knitting this on my um, Tits Out Collective colorway. Tell me to smile one more time. Oops, goodbye sock. Uh, this one came out a little bit lighter. Oops, oops. Then everybody else's. So I kept, I put this one aside for me. So this is it caked up. And it is on my penny base, which is uh, 80, 10, 10, superwash merino, cashmere nylon. And I am doing the winter rose sock. So here we go. Wait, I have sock blockers. Uh, I cast these on over the weekend because we went up to Jake's friend's house for a poker day slash 
uh, I did my nails and knit day because I don't know how to play poker. And there we go. I love this pattern. It's super, like, it's super nice to memorize. I, it reminds, not like the pattern, but like the potato chippiness reminds me of the Mercury socks. So I think this might be another new go-to pattern sock for me. There we go. I just did a two by two twisted um, rib for the cuff for about an inch and a half and chugging along on the leg. I don't know how long I'm gonna make these. I might make them pretty long cause I do really like all of the colors. So you've got a little bit of the pinks and the orange and the grays and these like super pops of neon. I'm not a big like neon person. I would say my dyeing palette is very earth toned, but after dyeing these, I kind of want to like go crazy for a month and just go neon nuts. Excuse me. Might happen. Yeah. <laughs> I knitted these on my Knit, Knit Pro Zings uh, 2.5 millimeter DPNs because I miss them and I love them so much. And I'm just knitting this one at a time to enjoy it. No rush, just chilling. I don't think it's brought back my sock mojo, but it's definitely helping. I think I'm just in the slog bits of all of my projects, so I needed something that showed me fast progress. I do want to work on my branches and buds pullover. I am so close to finishing it. By so close, I mean I have like 10 inches. I don't know how much I have left. Um, but I do want to work on that really badly. I'm gonna throw that in the car for the road trip because we are leaving at 9 p.m. the Thursday before to try and get into Nashville for about two or three o'clock. We're hoping we can just like split it in half and drive straight through because that would be the best way to do this. Um, so that will be in the car. The birds of a feather will be in the car because that's also gonna be like a half sample sort of thing. It's just gonna be a lot of stock in that kind of stuff. So that is what I'm working on. Uh, I did not cross stitch last week because we skipped old lady night. So nothing new there and uh, no spinning. Still, I don't know what it is. I need to get something to get out of my not spinning funk. I'm just embracing the sewing bug that I have right now because I really just, I wanna sew so many things. So, so many. And that is it for uh, making. I did, however, get some stuff um, from the I-91 Shop Hop. Uh, I said last week that I won two door prizes. Turns out that one bag that I showed you was just the New Haven one. And I received the Green Mountain Spinnery one. Oops, I put a sock blocker. They did not give me one sock blocker. So here it is. And they have spoiled me. First off, they gave me a billion patterns. So many patterns. Um, so I'm going to add the Classic Elite um, In Bloom collection to the giveaway pile because now I have two of them. So I would love to share this with you guys. And they also sent me a bunch. Look at this. What kind of a door prize is this? This is insane. So they sent, I'm just gonna go through these quickly because it's a bunch of stuff and I'll kind of just give you an idea of my plans for everything. So they sent me another skein of their teal and the working wool, the uh, skein of their new Mexican organic, a skein of their alpaca elegance, and I believe this is a worsted weight. Oh no, these are both DK weight. I did think for a second of maybe putting these with, I know these are worsted, but they're pretty close. Maybe doing a small color work with the spin cycle, the teal, and these two creams. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, they also sent some of their mountain mohair base in three different colors, which is 70% wool, 30% mohair, here it is. They sent it in a green, a natural brown, a black, and this blue. So I definitely want these to all go together, probably in a sweater, because I did get two skeins of the green and the brown, and then one skein with the black and the blue. So uh, I just have to see what color work DK sweaters are out there that I only need that much yarn for. 
They basically just funded my Rhinebeck sweaters for the next like two years. <laughs> they also sent along these two skeins of 100% llama, which I think are beautiful and so soft. So I think I'm gonna put these aside for a giveaway. Yes, because I feel like you guys need to feel this so bad. And they also sent two skeins of cotton. The Tahiki Yarns, which is 100%, I don't know how to say that, cotton, made in Greece. And this beautiful summery turquoise color. So I am also going to put this in the giveaway because as much as I love this color, I do not enjoy knitting with cotton. And I know there's people out there who really do. So I will have these in a giveaway as well. I also have a couple skeins of a pink cotton linen uh, wool blend that I might do like a summer garment, summery knits giveaway kind of thing. Keep an eye out for these guys coming your way. Also, I just need to share this love. This is a lot of love that Green Mound has sent me and I can't handle all of it. They also threw in some bag handles, which I do want to make myself a new purse um, slash tote thing. So those will go on that. And this notion pouch of cable needles, uh, row counters, stitch holders, uh, these adorable little bird scissors, uh, stitch markers, and a gauge ruler. I forgot the word which also has like a little blade on it so it can cut yarn. Inside, they're tote. So Green Mountain, you have blown me away one more time. So that is what I got. So uh, our giveaway bin is growing quite significantly. I think I'm going to do, um, I think I might start branching out to Instagram giveaways and uh, YouTube giveaways just because you guys are a little bit everywhere. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, I'm probably gonna have a bunch in the fall because the giveaway bin is now going to be too big to close. So we gotta give you guys some more gifts. Cause I love giving giveaways out. It's so much fun. And thank you for all the suggestions last week for that fabric. I think I'm going to do the, I forgot the name of it. I'll post a picture here. Somebody suggested it and my friend made her daughter a version of it, a version out of the Liberty Fabrics dinosaur fabric and I want it and I'm gonna make one for myself and I don't care if we match, it's gonna be great. I don't want a hundred things out of that fabric. But <laughs> I think I'm going to make uh, the double gauze into that and I have some silk that I have um, about the same amount of. So if I can squeak it out of the double gauze, I think I can do it out of the silk. So then I'll have two new summer dresses I think that's my plan. I don't know when I'll do them. I would like them done before SSK, but let's be serious here. All right, so the rest of this will be shop stuff and life things. So if you were not here for any of those, thank you so much for watching. And if you are, let us continue. For shop news, onceuponacorgi.com, where you can find all of our hand dyed yarn and fiber and kits. We will not be having any shop updates between now and SSK. As of right now, everything that we have in the shop will be it until SSK. Um, we're not gonna close the shop until like the Tuesday before we leave. So go browse. We have tons in the shop still. So almost every base, uh, I think the only ones we don't have a lot of is the ginger base. It's just SSK prep from now until then. We're hoping to bring between four and six skeins of each color to make sure that there's enough for you to do sweaters if you wanna do sweaters. I know that's when I start um, marketplaces and Shows like this is usually when I get my sweaters quantities because I'd like to see them in person. So our goal is to make sure that we have at least enough for a sweaters quantity for you in all the colors on all the bases. The main bases we will be bringing are Ginger, Penny, Isaac, and Marie Cutie. We will also have some Audrey and we will have some Oliver, but not everything on both of those bases. There will just be cubes of those. Uh, we will also bring what we have dyed up of Cecil and Isaac DK, and we will have some, we will have lots of fig lace there as well. We will be bringing our remaining fiber braids, but we won't be dyeing any more new ones because they are large and take up a lot of space in the house. So yeah, uh, I'm going to be posting sneak peeks of the colors that we are going to be bringing uh, throughout the weeks 
uh, and coming and then just posting pairings and stuff online for everything that is still in the shop. So that's that. If you want to get info on the shop, we do have the newsletter, which you can sign up for on the website. If you go to the homepage and scroll all the way down, there is a form to sign up for that. And we send them out every Wednesday, except this week will be Thursday, with information about shop updates, trunk shows, and all that jazz. So that's our shop news. Uh, oh no, one more thing. We do now have PayPal through the website. I spent a little bit of time these past couple weeks trying to figure it out and we have now connected PayPal to the website so you can do your card or PayPal to check out. I know a couple of people said that they were a little hesitant because we didn't have that and security and stuff. So I went through to see if I could do it and we can. All right, I think that's it for shop update news slash information. If there's anything I forgot, it's in the newsletter. Which leads us into life stuff, which has not been that exciting. Uh, we did poker day and went out for sushi. That was super fun. And that's basically it. It's just been working, uh, trying to figure out work stuff, working on work stuff, going over work stuff, helping Jake with work stuff. That's really it. Just lots of work. Yeah, lots of planning, trying to figure out the logistics for SSK, making sure everything's all set up and ready for reservations and cars and hotels and figuring out where we're gonna eat and what we're gonna do. So that's our plan. It's probably not gonna be that exciting for the next couple of weeks because we're just gonna be laying low until this trip. And I'm so excited and I can't wait. And it's gonna be our first big out of state. Like we did the biggie, but Springfield's only an hour and a half north of here so it's not that far out of state it's our big traveling show and i'm super excited for it and i hope that it goes really well because i would really love to make this like our summer road trip annual summer road trip show because i feel like that'd be super fun to get into a bit of the country that we've never been to before and really uh, be able to let people from a different area come see the yarn in person because we do a lot of shows in the new england area and New England has a lot of yarn shows. There's so many of them. So I'm excited to branch out. And I believe that is it. So I'm going to stop rambling and let you go. Thank you so much for coming in and chatting with us for a little bit about our crafting adventures. We will see you all next week. Bye.